simplify 45a to the fifth. Now they have multiple choices here, but come on. So here's what I do when I'm doing this. I have my perfect radical where all my perfect squares go, and then I have my leftover pile. Sometimes I'll call it my poo pile. I just throw the trash, the leftovers, in that pile. So just look at the number 45, and you're like, oh, which one of the perfect squares? Nine. So nine times five. So I put the nine in the perfects, and I put the five in the leftovers. Now, when we are doing variables, for it to be a perfect square, the exponent just needs to be even. Five is not even, obviously. So what we do is we bump it down. Let's bump it down one to a to the fourth. And then you're like, well, what about the last one? <laughs> Those in the trash pile. So that comes over here with the five. The square root of nine is three. And then remember, when you square root an exponent, you just divide the exponent by two. F of 4 is 2. So we have 3a to the second power. And then our root 5a doesn't have anything left that is a perfect square. So that would be our final answer. You get really good at these when you just keep practicing. I know it's probably overwhelming uh, just learning it today, but you will get good at this if you practice. So let's try some more. So 27, the perfect square is 9. It's 9 times 3. Now remember, the exponent needs to be even for it to be perfect. That's even. So we can put them all there with the perfect stuff. There are no ends in the trash box. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of n to the second would be n to the first. We just divide the exponent by 2. Then you got your root 3. All right. Letter B. So think of negative A as like negative 1A. Or negative 1A to the first, if you'd like. Now we're going to break up our root 60. So 60 is 4 times 15. 4 is the perfect square. A to the seventh is not perfect. It's not even. So we can put 6 here, and the seventh one goes over here. So let's see, negative 1, a to the first, times the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of a to the sixth, divide that exponent by 2, so that would be a to the third, root 15a. And then our last step is we have this stuff to combine. Now when you're multiplying, we did this in chapter 8 when we were doing exponent properties. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. a to the first times a to the third would be a to the fourth. That's all we can do out of that side. And then we have our root 15a. Remember, after you take the square root of things, you get rid of the square root sign. I see students all the time, they're like, oh, the square root of 16 is 4. And then they're like, oh, well, the square root of 4 is 2. No, once you square root it, you're done with that part. All right, last one. Ooh, all variables. Remember, the perfect things are the even exponents. x squared, that's all perfect. y to the fifth, no, no, no. It's got to be y to the fourth. And then the fifth y goes in the leftovers. Square root of x squared is x to the first. Square root of y to the fourth is y to the second. And then we have our leftover root y. Fantastic. I think, I think you're practicing after this. Oh, yeah, dude. Maybe we can knock one out. Looks like I still got time. Uh, which one looks the worst? Probably number 12. We'll do that. So negative 48. Oh, sorry. The negative's on the outside. So it's like negative 1 times whatever. 48. 4 does go in there. I'll just tell you, though, 16 also goes in there, and that's bigger. So that's 16 times 3. The b to the 4th, it's even. So let's put it all there. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of b to the 4th would be b to the 2nd. And then we can multiply that by negative 1 to get negative 4. b squared, root 3. Good luck on the rest of these. You got this.